What's up, guys? This is Webby back again for your WWE Super Showdown review. The WWE produced to us a big, huge, spectacular live from Australia this morning, 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern. Well, You know, Renee Young said it was WrestleMania-esque alike. WWE produced this like it was going to be spectacular, awesome, fantastic, tremendous, one that cannot be missed. Right? Let me tell you, folks. I'm going to skip my usual intro because you all know what to do. For those of you that have been here on this for the long haul, thank you very much. And if you have not been here for the long haul, and this is your first time seeing me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for all notifications. That would be much appreciated. Hop on this journey on YouTube with me and come along for the ride. That'd be much appreciated. A lot of fun and hard work goes into it for you wrestling fans. Not going through everything else. You all know what to do. But let me tell you, this show, outside of The Undertaker and Triple H, outside of AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan and The Miz, and you could maybe throw Charlotte and Becky Lynch in there. This show was nothing more than a glorified, over-hyped house show. I'm just telling you. From top to bottom. There, there's that's the best way I can explain it to you. Yeah, a house show with fireworks in it, and it held sixty something thousand people. And I want to say sixty something thousand people because WWE always likes to uh, 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 escalate the numbers on their shows. So, with that being said, let's dive into this super showdown review first thing i'm going to tell you though is the reason why you're getting this this afternoon and not this morning is because i did a very calculated uh uh decision i decided that i was not going to do the review this morning because I actually watched this at 4 o'clock this morning. And I was tweeting along while all this stuff was going on live. And let me tell you, if I would have done a review this morning, I was dog tired. I was uh, exhausted. I had to take a nap. I had to sleep. I had to do something to get myself freshened up. For the review, there was no way I was coming on here half asleep. Because by the time that thing was over, I was ready for a nap. So, that's why you're getting it this afternoon. Now, Super Showdown. First things first. Let's talk about The Miz and Daniel Bryan and the WWE Championship picture, okay? Because I think that's one of the biggest things that's on everybody's mind right now, outside of The uh, Undertaker and Triple H. You know, first things first, the WWE Championship, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, you know, because this really ties into the Daniel Bryan and The Miz matchup as well. AJ Styles and Samoa Joe 
let me tell you. Y'all remember Mind Games? 1996, Mankind, Shawn Michaels. Absolutely fantastic. If there is one matchup that really sticks out, in my estimation, about Shawn Michaels' title reign back in 1996, it is that matchup. Right out a mean, vicious, vindictive, hardcore style of Shawn Michaels, one that we had not seen before. Right, wrestling fans? We saw that in AJ Styles tonight, or this morning, wherever he was. Now, some of you might say, why do you say that? We didn't see the same type stuff. All of the, the, the mind games that, that Samoa Joe was playing with AJ Styles, Leading up to this matchup. And then when they went through that table and Samoa Joe's knee and, 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 and leg got hurt again, AJ Styles really took it to Samoa Joe. Piece by piece took him apart. Really showed a different side of AJ. We didn't see that side of him a whole lot during the uh, 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 Nakamura um, rivalry. Not until we got to uh, uh, Money in the Bank. And even then, we didn't see that kind of style out of uh, AJ Styles. So I really enjoy and appreciate what they did here. And quite frankly, I think that is uh, uh, one reason why... They uh, had this match the way it was. Now, now, Samoa Joe. A lot of fans I know are disappointed right now that Samoa Joe is not the WWE champion. Right place, wrong time. WWE. I have one question for you. How many more times are you going to make all the Samoa Joe fans out there suffer and wait? Seriously. How many more times can Samoa Joe make claim that he's going to do stuff and then fail? He did it with Brock Lesnar. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. He did it at SummerSlam that year. And he did it with AJ Styles. Now, if Samoa Joe comes and he eventually gets a rematch, and gets thrown into a mix and gets a triple threat match somehow, triple threat match somehow with Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, then he gets a championship. I might have a different tone. But as of right now, done for. Finish. Caprende. Sayonara. I mean, uh, what does he have to look forward to now? What? His first rivalry is with what? Uh, 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 Rey Mysterio? What, is Jeff Hardy going to come back and he's going to have a rivalry with Jeff Hardy? You're going to have Jeff Hardy lose his first uh, rivalry back? Rey Mysterio can't lose his first rivalry back in the WWE? What is it for uh, uh, Samoa Joe now? What? Randy Orton? Two heels facing each other? Randy Orton can't lose a rivalry. Anything that Samoa Joe is in right now that, that speaks good rivalry, it's almost like he's in a lose-lose situation now. I hate it for him. On the other hand, you have AJ Styles, who won this matchup 
couple different reasons. Survivor Series is just around the corner. And if it's brand supremacy again, who's the best one to face uh, uh, Roman Reigns? Hey, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles. We have not seen that classic since Roman Reigns and AJ Styles did their rivalry when AJ Styles first came onto the scene in the WWE. Haven't seen that. Plus, the game, not officially out completely as uh, uh, everybody had anticipated yet. So, you get what uh, 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 I'm saying, why AJ Styles is still the WWE Champion. And I don't see him dropping it to Daniel Bryan at Crown Jewel. Speaking of Daniel Bryan and The Miz, at Super Showdown, Daniel Bryan beat The Miz for number one contendership. It was an okay matchup. Can't complain about it. Nothing real bad about this matchup whatsoever. But few different directions now that is going to be played with the, uh, the WWE Championship picture uh, going into all the way WrestleMania, okay? AJ Styles, WWE Champion, as we have just discussed, and I see him being it through the Survivor Series, all right? After the Survivor Series, The Miz will be the one that takes that title off of him. There is no doubt in my mind, no question in my mind that he will be. What happens there? Some might think, oh, well, yeah, there's a Royal Rumble for Daniel Bryan. Uh, 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 uh. The Rock. The Rock. If rumors are true, The Rock will win the Royal Rumble. And he will headline WrestleMania with Roman Reigns, in which we will have a family rivalry affair on Monday Night Raw. Elimination Chamber, we will see Daniel Bryan get his number one contendership for the WWE Championship in which he will, he will beat The Miz at WrestleMania and make it Yeselmania again, five years later. There you go. Laid it all out. From right now at this point, all the way to WrestleMania 35. You're hearing it here on this podcast. Was it a good uh, 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 rivalry so far? Was it a good decision so far by WWE? Quite frankly, I thought they would have the Miz to win. Okay. I thought they'd have Miz win. And, and uh, I was really pushing for uh, uh, Daniel Bryan to win the Royal Rumble. And go from there to uh, 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 get his shot at WrestleMania. But with reports of The Rock winning the Royal Rumble, it only makes sense that they go down this path. And The Miz costing Daniel Bryan the WWE Championship at Crown Jewel. It's just kind of the way I'm seeing it. See what happens. What else did we see tonight or this morning on Super Showdown? Six woman tag team action in which Ronda Rousey and the Bellas took on the Riot Squad. This matchup, if you blinked, if you went to the bathroom, 
and got something to eat, you missed it. It wasn't that long of a mashup, nor should it have been. The only thing I'm going to say is WWE pulled the trigger on. It should have been so much more. Okay. If they were going, if they are going to go down the road that we all know that they are going to go down, this match should have been so much more. Now, wrestling fans, they didn't for a couple of reasons. Those of you that are, are sitting there thinking, they're not going with uh, uh, Nikki Bella and uh, Ronda Rousey. Give me a break. Don't get that in your head. I want you to take that and set it off to the side. Okay? For the past number of weeks, ever since the Bellas came back, they have been getting crapped on by the WWE Universe because nobody really wants to see Nikki Bella take on Ronda Rousey in the main event of Evolution. What does WWE do in this glorified house show? They give us a short matchup. They don't have the Bellas turn on Ronda Rousey. And they go home with the fans happy with the girls raising arms, so on and so forth. And Monday night, you watch if Nikki Bella is the one that's going to challenge Ronda Rousey, she will turn her back on Ronda because they said when they were promoting Evolution, we will find out who's facing Ronda Rousey in the upcoming weeks. You did not want to get backlash on this show as well. And another reason could be not as many eyes was going to be seen at live at 4 o'clock this morning. Whatever the case. Nikki Bella is still going to be the number one contender for Ronda Rousey's championship. Mark my word. The Iconics versus Asuka. Now, this matchup and Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy, I want this surprised me for a few different reasons. Okay. Now, usually when superstars are in their hometown or their home country or anything of that nature, they take a loss. Just because WWE likes to uh, have fun with that, either to build sympathy or to make the fans mad or to crap on the character, something. I just know every time they're in that character's hometown, they always take a loss. Iconics, they beat Asuka and Naomi. Now, it was predictable. Asuka and Naomi had gotten the upper hand on SmackDown virtually almost every week. So, I mean, that, that was pretty predictable. Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy is the new Cruiserweight champ. They laid it out pretty predictable as well. Said as they were coming down the aisle, Cedric Alexander had not been beaten in 2018. Said that while he was coming down the aisle. That's number one. And you know, when you really think about it as well, it's not like they were changing the guard 
to somebody that is going to waste away the championship. No. They're giving it to a person that will carry the title on and do good stuff with it and carry it on for the future as well. Buddy Murphy will. So good job by WWE by doing that. I really appreciate that they did that with the Cruiserweight Championship. And by giving this hometown hero uh, uh, a W under his belt as well. Kevin Owens and Elias took on Bobby Lashley and John Cena. John Cena and Bobby Lashley, victorious. Look, this match was put together for one reason and one reason only. Put John Cena on the card. Uh... But Bobby Lashley got beat up, and then we had the six moves of doom, and then it was over. John Cena had his uh, new finisher. I, I was, I kind of liked it. We didn't see the attitude adjustment finish off Elias. Now, Elias and Kevin Owens could have used a W here, but... John Cena's match back, first match back, of course, he's going to get the W. So, Bobby Lashley and John Cena, victorious here, shows off a new finisher, shows off something he'd been uh, uh, working with, they said, with Jackie Chan. So, uh, that, that was kind of cool to see. And uh, anytime we get to see John Cena every once in a while, that, that, that's pretty cool because we don't get to see him uh, – uh, very often so um yeah that that's pretty cool and uh excuse me um that was my phone take care of that later but um anyway continuing on with this show charlotte took on becky lynch this matchup for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. What can you say about it? I mean, seriously, what can't you say about this matchup? The biggest thing about it, storylines. And that's all we really ask for, is good storytelling. And that's what Charlotte and Becky Lynch has been producing. They really have twisted a rivalry around where WWE wanted us to take somebody that we loved and they wanted us to hate. And we said no. We said absolutely not. You're force feeding us garbage. We're not doing it. We're not listening to you. We're going to do what we want. We like her. We appreciate her. She hasn't had the opportunities. Becky Lynch is awesome. Becky Lynch has that stone cold, uh, uh, fired up, I'm going to knock you in the face and stomp a mud hole in you kind of attitude. And, you know, she might have lost tonight or this morning, wherever you – Yeah, I keep saying tonight. But, you know, we watched it, and it was nighttime. It was <coughs> – it might have been 4 in the morning, but it was still pitch black outside, so give me a break. One thing I noticed, WWE is already talking about Charlotte becoming an eight-time women's champ. Eight-time women's 
champ. Now, by the time this rivalry is over, I'm sure Charlotte's going to have another title reign. And by the time WrestleMania gets here, I'm sure she'll have another title reign. So by April, she'll have uh, nine title reigns. That's a that's a, a little much, WWE. It's Becky's turn, okay? I think Charlotte can afford to completely lose this rivalry before she goes over to Monday Night Raw where she'll win the Royal Rumble before she goes to challenge Ronda Rousey. I think she can, but that's just my opinion. The Bar versus the New Day. Not much to say about this contest, honestly. Uh, the New Day retained their tag team championships. Probably going to see this uh, rivalry continue on for a little bit. And then, hopefully, the WWE will bring up uh, tag teams or at least build up some of the tag teams they have on SmackDown Live. I hope that's what they do. But we've seen this rivalry before. We know what these tag teams can produce. So, see where it goes from here. Dogs of War versus The Shield. We saw Braun Strowman mowing down everybody. We saw another tease of Dean Ambrose turning heel. We saw Superman punch the Dean Ambrose accident. We saw Dolph Ziggler trying to be the toughest one out there because he doesn't want to be the weak link. We saw everybody just mayhem all over the arena. We saw Braun Strowman spear everybody in half when they were going for the triple power bomb. We almost saw a table, announce table break, but they saved that for uh, the main event, which we'll get to in a second. Bottom line about the six-man tag team matchup, the Dogs of War could have used a W here. The Shield didn't need to win. Now, some of you are going to say, well, you're just hating on the Shield. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Here's what you got. Yet you Crown Jewel coming up, okay? And you got a couple scenarios that could happen. All right? Well, number one, we know one thing that's going to happen. We know Roman Reigns is going to walk in the crown jewel, the Universal Champion, and we know he's going to walk out the Universal Champ. So Braun Strowman taking this loss here does him zero good. And quite frankly, speaking of that, when Braun Strowman had them all laid out, why he didn't just pick up Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose or uh, uh, Seth Rollins and power slam them to oblivion for a one, two, three. I do not know. Instead, he just tossed them outside the ring because he had all three of them down. So he could just pick the bones of one of them and then the Dogs of War could have won the match. But that's getting off the subject of what I was trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that's one thing that we know is going to happen. Roman Reigns is going to leave Crown Jewel Universal Champion. Number two, 
If it's not announced yet, I can almost guarantee it's going to be the other two members of the Shield versus the other two members of the Dogs of War for the tag team titles. And if that's the case, okay, if that's the case, you're either going to have the Dogs of War retain the titles either by... Dean Ambrose turning heel at Crown Jewel, which is a possibility, but I highly doubt that would be the case because, because you're not going to do that at a big show like that. You're more than likely going to do that at like a, a Survivor Series or a show at the United States. Instead, you would have the shield hold all the gold. Okay? So that's that. And two, two, dogs of war looking like dirt. Again, makes no sense. And as far as The Undertaker and Triple H is concerned, look, I could go on and on and on and on and on about this matchup. Fact remains is, there's really only one big thing to mention about The Undertaker and Triple H last time ever. And that is, you can pretty much stamp it official now. Crown Jewel, Brothers of Destruction versus DX. When The Undertaker lost to Triple H, and then he choke slammed Shawn Michaels through. The announce table when he and Kane did, and then tombstoned Triple H in the center of the ring after they all held each other's arms up in the air. That spoke volume. Match itself, eh, wasn't anything like special. They changed the match on the fly and said it was a no DQ. They did that so Shawn Michaels could interfere. But, you know, what can you say? They had to get Shawn Michaels involved in the match so they could uh, get this ending the way that it could uh, uh, happen. And Shawn Michaels had been taking a lot of bumps here lately, so we know he's officially coming out of retirement, folks. And if this doesn't speak it now for you, I don't know what will. But you all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. I'm getting out of here. And until I see you again, which will be later tonight, because I'm going to a wrestling event right here in town. Hopefully I get to meet Coco Beware and some other wrestlers uh, at the show. I know uh, the Birdman will be there, so uh, I'll at least get to uh, get video of him, uh, possibly of him wrestling. I, I think he's getting to do that. So that should be entertaining. Uh, uh, but until I see you then, this is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.